Hello and welcome to part 11 of the Gauge 1 LMS carriage build. And as you can see now, we have our carriages all glued up with the sides on and that's really now starting to take shape. That's starting to look quite good. We're at a stage now where we need to maybe think about interiors. Gauge 1 is a scale large enough where you can put interiors in the carriage and you will actually see them. And I think that just adds to the realism a little bit more rather than just leaving this as an empty box with the roof on. Because you'll see that as the train goes past you'll see it's just an empty shell with nothing in it. So it's going to look just that little bit nicer with a little bit more detail added. So what we've got is this moulding this is for the coach seats and um, what I shall do is cut this up into the various lengths for the coach seats which we'll see later on. The other thing I did was on my CAD system I drew up a drawing of, I'm not sure if you can see that very well I drew up a drawing of some of the internal coach parts and sent them off to my laser cutting company and he's done some little interior panels for me like so this is going to be um these are going to be corridor coaches that is you have the seats along one side and then there's going to be a corridor that you walk along to get into the various compartments so when the seats go on what we'll also have are these these will go on the length down the corridor you maybe see that a little bit more as time progresses the other thing I've also made this is a, a template one is there'll be a each carriage will be separated off first of all now I will start by cutting some of these coach seats to the length that we need been uh, working on the seats and you can see these are the the wooden seats there that have been cut out from the molding so we've moved on from these adding our covering effect adding our covering so you can see a little bit of a uh, bit more detail on the seats so they look quite realistic they certainly look better than the just the bare wooden molding that we had the wood on the original panels was too light and they needed to be darker if you look at the original shade you can see what I mean there and inside the coach when you sort of put these panels in they were too light you know here's what they were and here's what they've taken them down to take them down to a darker color which is what they were on the on the real thing so that's something else I've done and I've also done that on the the inside of the coach as well here you can see with the wood stain uh, that I use is certainly taking it down made it a little bit uh, a little bit darker and you can look at that compared to the outside of the panel where it's a lot a lot lighter so the plan for today is now to go ahead and fit out these internal compartments now so I need to just measure out the spacing for these and where these little dividers are going to go for the individual compartments so they'll sit something like that and we'll go ahead and work through and then the next thing is I shall do is start to put these outer panels on to complete the shape of the uh, compartment there well, that's today's little job Here's the coach with the partitions in now and here's the effect that I wanted to create through the windows as the coach goes past so you can see a little bit of detail inside. Here's a top view just looking down you can see the compartments there now how they're all set up and how we got the corridor at the side. No prizes for guessing what the next stage is. All the interiors have now been 
glued in and are in position and the partitions are up. So that's all done. So the next thing I'm doing now, as you can see, is masking off everything ready for the painting of the of the outside panels which will be in LMS Crimson Lake. So I just need to finish masking this off and then we should begin the painting. The other thing I've also done is I went over these markings for the for the um, for the hinges on the coaches just reinforced those again went over them and went over the coach door markings as well those little um, those little grooves just to accentuate them before I do the painting so I'll just put this last one on and we will mix the paint Paint now mixed, we're ready to start spraying. It'll just be a couple of coats to fix this. The first coat, the first coat is just going to be soaked up by the grain. So it's going to be a couple of coats used and then we'll sand it down. There's the three coaches with their first coat of the Crimson Lake LMS colour. So this will have a, a rub down with some very very fine, probably wet and dry sandpaper, a very fine grit, just to smooth that down. Six coats of Crimson Lake gloss paint later, we're just about there now with the painting on the outside now as you can see. While I was doing the painting I started to give some thought to the coach roof. The original plan was to use this birch ply. This is um, 0.8 of an inch thickness, 0.8 mil thickness and I thought that would be that would be quite good to use as a roof. One of the things I want on here, I want to make the roof removable. Um, just in case I ever need to get on the inside or alter anything or change anything, I decided that I was trying to have it so the roof could be removable. So I went ahead and cut the birch ply and began to steam it the way I steamed the sides of the coach panels. And this is what we finished up with. And it looked okay initially but some problems soon became apparent one of the problems was that you were asking quite a lot of birch ply to actually bend that tight around these corners you could bend it you could steam it the problem was we had some quite sharp curves to come down to into here so that's quite a lot of bending to have to do and it's quite difficult to get that to go. It looked okay and the only problem was that happened next is it wasn't stable. It tended to warp. Now if you look at this length view you can see the problem there. It's almost a bit like a banana shape. And I tried, made several attempts putting stiffeners on and various bits and pieces, various attempts, but you could not actually get it to fit properly and hold properly. And it's beginning to look as though the only way to do this was to actually glue it down onto the body, which is not something I didn't really want to do. And as I mentioned, it was not, you were asking a lot, say, for this ply to do these sharp bends. 
So unfortunately we had to give up on that idea. So I went to the next idea and got some 0.9, um, 0.9 of a mil aluminium sheet. And what I've been able to do with this is aluminium's quite soft and was able to gently coax it round into the shape of the roof that we needed. And what we finished up with is something like this. So that's not bad. And that fits on there quite nice. In its own weight, it's on. And that's, uh, that's great. That's perfect. That's what I was looking for. I just put a couple of tabs on the inside. Some tabs on the inside here. Just to keep this all parallel. Because these sides do have a tendency maybe just to bow in slightly. Because it's wood, there's nothing to hold it. And it can move. So with these tabs, not only does it keep the roof on, but it also just keeps everything parallel on the sides. And that, on its own weight, I mean I don't need to put any fixings down on there. That's held in, that's held in nice, that's exactly what we're looking for. So the next stage is just to go ahead and do the next one, then the final panel of these. Okay, using my hide soft mallet, what we can gently do, and this is how I did the other two, is you gently persuade this, just ten gentle taps, very light, just to start to get the bend. You see, it's actually starting to go with a slight bend now. I'm just working it along, just persuading it very gently, not too hard, and you get a bend, a kink, or a sharp angle in the metal. It's not too bad because you can quite easily sort of squeeze it out, putting it back in the vise to uh, get rid of it. But these edges, they have quite a sharp radius, and as I said, on the plywood, it was impossible to get this sharp radius. So just knocking this round very gently. Again with this former I'm just able to apply just a gentle gentle pressure on here just to start to get the radius very gently and just to coax this metal into the bend that we need. Ideally what we would need in a perfect world is some rollers, a bit like a mangle, some rollers to put this through. Uh, unfortunately we don't have access to any such equipment so we really have to do it this way very carefully. Here the old steam bender it's coming in handy as well as a support just to get this radius on. And that is starting to take shape. You see how that's coming along now? I'm starting to get the curve that we're looking for. I just work on and just carry on the other side. And if you look at this profile now, you can start to see the shape and where we need to bend it. So need a bit more of a bend in the middle to curve it round a little bit more. Now the beauty of using aluminium is it's light and it doesn't work harden like brass would do. Like you could use, could have used maybe a brass. I've seen these sometimes made out of brass. Uh, the trouble is with brass sheet trying to form it and beat it and bend it, brass will start to work harden. Uh, that's the the slight, probably slight drawback with brass, but with aluminium you can bash it and bend it all day and it won't get any harder or any more, or any more brittle. That now is pretty close for the probably three quarters of it. As you can see, see now there, all we need to do is bend these sides down 
tighter to get that tighter radius. As you can see we've got that radius now just about where we want it. So if we get the radius right at each end I can then measure them across to get the radius running running parallel the length of the uh, the length of the roof. But that radius is uh, not looking too bad at the moment. Is that's the radius we want? So to set our our gauge checking either ends now. All I can do now is just gauge it along the whole length just to make sure I've got the bends right and these edges are running parallel. It's not too far out, you just want a couple of tweaks here and there, which is what I shall do now. Here's the coaches with their roofs finished now. Just thought I'd bring them out and put them on the track just to see what they look like to get the effect. I hope you'll agree, they've not turned out too bad. So what we need to do now, the next job on the roof, is to paint them. <laughs> 